This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I believe that the angels of God are about to operate in this earth to such a point that it's going to change people's words as, long as, as well as change their minds. Please understand that angels preserve destinies. And all the things that are going on right now, you're about to see a strong manifestation of angels doing just that. You are going to reach the place that God has called you to. Tonight, I want to I wanna spend some time talking about angels. I don't know if you have a hard time believing in angels or not, but they're, it's in the Bible, and also it's in Psalms 91. And I like to begin there uh, in Psalms 91, verses 10 through 12. We're going to talk about angelic provision for covenant longevity. Angelic provision for covenant longevity. Uh, Psalms 91, verse 10, let's read that in the King James, verses 10 and uh, through 12. He says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, and they will keep thee in all thy ways. That's powerful. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now let's le read that out of the New, New Living Translation because this is something you have to hold on to. This is something that I had a personal experience with when I had a very bad accident in Sacramento, California about 20 years ago, and this scripture came alive. He says, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. Uh, verse 11, he says, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. So angels are under orders to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Now that's a powerful promise. You know, angels are God's agents for our preservation. God's angels are agents for our defense and for our security. They are there to ward off all evil and devour all plagues. They are messengers of destiny. Their job is to bring you out of every danger. Angelic provision is your covenant heritage. So let's take advantage of it. Angelic provision is your covenant heritage. It's your covenant heritage. So let's take advantage of it. Some of you have angels, and they ain't, they've not done anything. I mean, they're tired, dusty, and it's time for you to, to, to understand that this is your heritage. Angelic provision is your heritage. Angelic provision for longevity is your heritage. You know, uh, in Genesis 48, 15 through 16, let's look at that real quick. It's talking about Jacob and how Jacob lived 147 years. But notice this, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, 
the angel which redeemed me from all evil. Check that out. The angel, Joseph's talking about the angel which redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads and let my name be uh, named on them in the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Powerful thing. And Jacob lived 147 years. Now, angels are designed to preserve destinies. Angels are designed to preserve destinies. Let's look at some scripture on this. Exodus 23 and 20. Designed to preserve destinies. Verse 20, behold, I sent an angel before thee, to what? To keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That's powerful. You see the assignment here, to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared for thee. Angels preserve destinies. I'm telling you, I, I can't explain the intricate detail, but I know that their assignments from God is to keep you in the way, to keep you in the way, and to preserve and bring you to that place which God has prepared for you. Here's the good news is whatever place God has prepared for you, I believe with the help of the angels, you are going to arrive at that perfect place. Look at Daniel chapter 3, verses 23 and 28. Daniel chapter 3, verse 23 and 28. He says, uh, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. But what happened? Verse 28, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. So here in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though that they tried to kill him and burn him and put him in a fiery furnace, he had to give props to God, if you will. And he had to say some things to God that, uh, hey, God, look at what you've done. You're, you're awesome. I'm going to give notice to him. And look what he says. Verse 28, continue. And have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. I believe that the angels of God are about to operate in this earth to such a point that it's going to change people's words as, long as, as well as change their minds. Please understand that angels preserve destinies. And all the things that are going on right now, you're about to see a strong manifestation of angels doing just that. You are going to reach the place that God has called you to. Look at Daniel chapter 6, verse 16, and then 19 through 22. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and they cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou serveth continually, he will deliver thee. Now, I, I'm sure he was kind of mocking Daniel at this point, but look at verse 19 through 22. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a with la, with lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou serveth continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Verse 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouths, the lion's mouth, and they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And so you can see here that angels were sent to the rescue, that in a time and in the midst of trouble, even unto death, angels are sent to the rescue. You know, I can remember very clearly in, in the midst of my life 20 years ago when that accident happened in Sacramento, I saw the angels that God has sent. Now, you think whatever you want to think, I know what I saw. 
went past my face and those angels were sent. Those angels were sent to rescue. There are angels that will be sent to rescue. And in that time, when my life was on the line, it was not time for me to go at that time. I hadn't started a New York church. There are lots of things that I hadn't done, hadn't started it. And in the midst of destruction, in the midst of, of, of my life being on the line, I can bear witness to what Daniel's testifying here. God sent his angels to rescue me. And I'm telling you, whenever trouble comes your way, if you will begin to release your faith and begin to even hear what I'm saying, God will send his angels to rescue you. Even when the devil's trying to shorten your life, when you know you have a right to long life, angelic provision for your longevity is at hand. Look at Acts chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. And I know in this series, I'm bringing notice to all these things through scriptures that sometimes we just read over, but we're just taking a closer look at this. Exodus, uh, what did I say? Acts chapter 5, verse 5 through 11. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Now, this is good. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So they were praying for Peter, had intercessors praying for him. Verse 6, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door, they kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains, they fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and he followed him, and whence not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So he's got, to, he's got to backtrack a little bit like, man, is this really happening? Next verse. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and they passed on through one street and, and, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all of the expectation of the people of the Jews. Now, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, this same God is available to do the same thing for those of you who will believe him. I'm telling you there are angels that, that are under orders. They are under orders by God Almighty to hearken unto the voice of his word. And those angels have been assigned to make sure you go down the right path. And if there's any danger, see, they, he wasn't, Peter wasn't supposed to be spending all that time in jail. God knows how to deliver you. He has put his angels under order, and those angels are going to preserve your destiny. They are going to preserve your destiny, whatever it may be. Now look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. He says, are they not all ministering spirits? Now, he's referring to angels. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Those of you who are born again, you are heirs of salvation. Those angels have been sent forth to minister, to, to, to serve, uh, to operate under orders by God to those that are heirs of salvation. I am an heir of salvation, and I had, I had the opportunity, and it's a blessing, to see these things come to pass, that, that when my life was on the line, that those angels, those ministering spirits came to minister to me uh, at that particular time. What a blessing of the Lord. And then Psalms 103, verse 20. Psalms 103 and verse 20. He says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. 
And then Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 6, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 6, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angels, look at there, there's that mouth. The angels are paying attention to what you say, hearkening to the voice of the word. He said, neither say thou before thy, the angels that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? And so, you know, the Bible's very clear. These angels are here. They're under assignment. They're under commandment. Don't say something that's going to cause them to, to hold up. Don't say something uh, before the angels. He says, neither say thou before that angels that it was an error. Don't say that. God Almighty has already prepared your provision, and God Almighty has already done what's necessary to preserve your destiny. That's a blessing. Now, here's the next issue. How do we get angels to work for us? How do I call the angels to my rescue? Uh, well, I think the, the first piece here is it, you call them through trust. And remember I said uh, trust is a level of commitment. You, there's something about when I trust you and, I, and I'm committed to trusting you, that level of commitment now begins to see these angels begin to work on your behalf. Look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 28. I want to highlight how trust was a, a main factor in this. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 28, he says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and delivered his servants that what? That trusted in him. Delivered because they trusted in him. Trust is a force of commitment. It's not just confidence, it is a force of commitment. And so by trusting God, you put angels to work. Yeah, by literally trusting God, your commitment to him. I'm not talking about this, well, I trust you, but I don't see none yet, so I don't trust you no more. But your commitment to him will put angels to work. A few scriptures here, Psalms 125, verse 1 and 2. I think we looked at it in this series. Let's look at it again. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. Abide forever. Verse 2, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth uh, even forever. So this is so, so, so very important. In fact, let's go down to uh, verse 3 real quick. Verse 3, he says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. It won't happen. Amen. And then let's look at Psalms 34 and 7 one more time. That force of commitment, by trusting God, you put angels to work. By trusting God, you, you put the angelic provision for your covenant longevity to work. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them. That's what he's talking about there in Psalms 125. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that what? That fear him, that reverence him, that respects him, that trust him. And what happens? He says, and they deliver them. And they deliver them. Do you trust God? Are you, are you, are you committed to that? Is, are, are, is your trust a force of commitment? Well, if it is, then that trust is what's going to move the angels to begin to operate on your behalf. Here's another thing that you do to see these angels operate. You believe. Somebody says, what? Yeah, you, you believe. You, you know, I'm preaching right now. You just assume that people believe what I am saying. You, you just assume that everybody just receives what I am saying. And, and I am telling you, that the world is this, this is ridiculous. I mean, all they know about angels is on Christmas time or something, you know? But you believe. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 45, something that happens when you believe God, when you commit Him, something happens. Look at this, verse 45. And blessed is, is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I mean, Mary could talk to you about this, man. An angel coming to you talking about you're going to be pregnant and it's not going to be Joseph's. 
You know, when you believe God, you commit him. And when God is committed, angels are assigned to ensure that his will for you is established. So when you believe God, you commit him. And God's like, listen, it's going to be done. That's your job. Your job is to carry out my will on what they believe me for, praise God. Look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. Matthew 18, verse 10. And this is cool. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. The angels do always behold the face of the Father. The angels do always behold the face of the Father. Why? To know their next assignment. Why are the angels always beholding the face of the Father? To know their next assignment. And I'm telling you, man, when God's committed and you're committed to him, they face, they are facing the face of the Father in heaven so that they can know their next assignment. I tell you, man, I'm committed to God and God gets it done. I'm committed to his word and it gets done. I'm committed to his protection and it gets done. And I am committed to long life and, la and longevity and he'll get the job done. And everybody said, amen. All right, so here's another one, service. Service, you want the angels to work for you? Service, this is so important. Your service to God and his kingdom also goes a long way in provoking angelic intervention. Um, I read to you Daniel chapter 6 and verse 16 and then 20 and 22. You saw about uh, uh, the, the three Hebrew boys. Look at Exodus 23. Exodus 23 also, verses 25 and 26. Exodus 23, 25, 26. He says, and you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I, and notice he says, There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Man, I'm telling you, are you committed to God? Are you committed to, you know, walking with him? Are you committed to the, to the communion of the word and the communion of his presence? Your communion with the word, it's not a waste of time. Being, being a committed, sold out Christian, being a Christian that has, you know, decided to become intimate with God and his word, it's not a waste of time. I will fulfill your days. Amen. Here's a fourth thing that the angels really move to, prayer, prayer. Matthew 6, Matthew 26, verse 51 through 53, prayer motivates the angels to begin to move on your behalf. And verse 51, he says, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, struck a servant of the high priest, and smote off his ear. 52, then said Jesus unto him, put up again the sword into his, in, in, into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I can now, I cannot now pray to my Father? So he's looking at them like, even though the ear is off, do you actually think that I cannot pray to my Father? And he shall presently he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Do you not understand? You guys are surrounding me, trying to attack me. Y'all don't even get it. I can pray to my Father, and 12 legions of angels will, will be given unto me. So that just shows me Jesus is like, I can pray, and angels will be given. I can pray, and angels will be given. Number five. The name of Jesus provokes angelic provision for your longevity. The name of Jesus, calling upon the name of Jesus. Now look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6. 
calling upon the name of Jesus. He says, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. You see, when you invoke the name of Jesus in faith, you secure the attention of all the angels of God who, 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 who will come to rescue you, who will come to your rescue. For most people, death seems final and frightening. The good news is that Jesus rewrote the ending of your story. Creflo Dollar takes you through the scriptures and shows how Christians can triumph over death in his groundbreaking series, Victory Over Death. This five message compilation can be yours right now for a love gift of 30 US dollars or more. Long life is not a special offer, it's a covenant right. I wanna look at life through the eyes of the one that created it. I wanna look at life through the eyes of, of God's word, through the eyes of my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your part is to release your faith to take possession over, over these victories, over this gift that has been given without repentance. Get your copy today by calling the number on your screen or visiting creflodollarministries.org. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind every day when you download and stream these uplifting messages. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons and transform into the powerful, victorious believer God made you to be. He will always take our brokenness, I believe, and he will bring new life and he will bring beauty from it. But thank God for the Word because it has the ability in and of itself to repair. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.